Well, hello there, and welcome back to my woodshop. I'm Kelly, and you're about to watch as I embark on my most ambitious project yet. This video is the first of a series in which I'll be making a violin. I've been playing the violin for over 20 years, so this is a project that's very special to me. I've spent the last month or so researching the art of violin making, collecting all the tools and literature that I'll need to do this, and I've come to the conclusion this is either going to be the most epic and awesome thing that I've ever done, or it's gonna make me wanna throw all my tools into the nearest dumpster. But go big or go home, right? Without further ado, let's get into it. As it turns out, violin molds and stencils are pretty hard to come by. I picked these up on eBay for about $75 and I'm very happy with the quality. The kit contains stencils for the plates, the plywood mold, stencils for the neck and scroll, as well as a stencil for the F holes. I purchased all of my wood materials for this project from a company called Carpathian Tonewood. They're located in Romania, and from what I can tell, they source their wood from the forests of the surrounding Carpathian mountain range. All of this wood costs roughly $400, including shipping, but it's okay because I'm really delighted with the quality. Luthiers use an old-fashioned hot wood glue called hide glue made from animal collagen. It creates a strong hold, but the hold does break under high heat. So if a violin ever needs to be repaired, it's easy to break the bonds of the glue with heat without destroying the violin. I'm placing the glue granules in a glass jar and mixing it with two parts water. After the hide glue reaches a jelly-like consistency, it's ready to be heated. Using an old crock pot I had lying around my kitchen, I'm creating a double boiler to keep the glue at a steady temperature, around 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, I have to glue six wooden blocks of Carpathian spruce into each of these corners. These blocks will serve as the foundation for the instrument. Once glued to the mold, each block will be trimmed down and shaped. I pay careful attention to make sure the growth rings on the top and bottom block are both vertical and parallel, and I also make sure that the growth rings on the corner blocks are horizontal and parallel to each other as well. This will make sure that the wood expands and contracts evenly. Now that I'm happy with the rough sizes of all the blocks, I'm going to glue and clamp each one and let them dry for 24 hours. Twenty-four hours later, I remove the clamps and set the template onto the mold to trace out the final shapes of the blocks. Next, I'm removing the bulk of the excess wood with the bandsaw. And finally, I'm cleaning up the outline of each block on the spindle sander. At this point, it's ready for the ribs, otherwise known as the sides of the violin, to be glued on. Now it's time to prepare my ribs. I'll be using my table saw for this process. As you can see, there's a large gap between the saw blade and the throat plate, which will potentially trap the very, very thin material I'll be cutting. So I'm replacing the basic throat plate with the zero clearance plate. Now the thin material won't get stuck in the gap. Next, I'm replacing my combination blade with this thin kerf blade meant for ripping wood. This is important because I don't want any burn marks on my ribs, and the maple I bought is incredibly hard. It has a really beautiful light figuring. It even has a couple bird's eyes here and there. Now it's time to cut my maple down to size. For lack of a better idea, I made this tiny little template. It's a piece of pine that I thickness to 1.1 millimeters thick, which is how thick the violin ribs need to be. I'm placing this template along the saw blade and matching up the maple to it to cut nice thin 1.1 millimeter strips. It's not scientifically perfect, but it's good enough for me. Thank you. 
Now that I've cut my ribs, it's time to scrape them with my handy dandy card scraper. This will remove the milling marks and make the figuring really pop. Now comes the fun part. It's time to bend the wood on the bending iron. I set the bending iron to be roughly 225 degrees Fahrenheit. I put a healthy amount of purified water on the side of the wood that will be closest to the iron. Next, I slip it onto this DIY quote unquote bending strap made of tin foil and parchment paper and get to work. And that is a pretty good fit. Next, I'm going to glue the edges of the ribs to my corner blocks by clamping these trapezoid shaped blocks of scrap wood against them. This will apply a nice even pressure for a tight bond. Now I'm going to bend the ribs of the upper and lower parts of the violin. If you're wondering why I'm outdoors and wearing a respirator while bending the wood, it's because the bending iron gives off a really nasty smell and I don't want to stink up my wood chop or my lungs with whatever these fumes are. Now it's time to glue these puppies up. I'm only gluing up one side of the violin at a time because I don't have enough clamps available. After gluing up the other side of the ribs off camera, I'm putting the finishing touches with a little bit of sandpaper and my cabinet scraper. When the wood gets wet and is steamed on the bending iron, it raises the grain, so the scraper is taking off that furry texture. Next, I'm doing the linings. These are pieces of willow that will be glued to the inside of the ribs to add stability. Each of them are about three millimeters thick and I need to thickness them to roughly two millimeters with my block plane. Then I cut these strips to be a width of about seven millimeters. Now I'm ready to bend my linings. I place the linings onto the mold here, 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 and here. I already glued the lining to this spot off camera and I'll wait till the end to glue this lining, which I'll explain later. I'm clamping up each lining with clothespins. They hold really well and are non-destructive to the precious outer surface of the delicate ribs. The linings are now firmly glued up after sitting clamped for 24 hours. Traditionally, the C-shaped linings in the middle of the violin are mortised into the corner blocks. I didn't want the pressure of the camera on me the first time I cut these mortises because I was so nervous about getting it right, but it ended up coming out really nicely. Now I'll show you how I did it on the opposite side. The tools I used were an X-Acto knife and a very tiny screwdriver I got for Christmas from my dad that I sharpened into a chisel. As you can see, the mortises are cut on the tangent of the ribs curve. I took my time with this, making sure to not make the hole too big.
Once done cutting, I put the lining in dry to make sure it fits, and now it's time to glue it up. I'll let this sit for 24 hours and then remove the clamps. And now, the sides of the violin are finally done. Thank you so much for watching the first video in my violin making series. If you'd like to watch the rest of my series, go ahead and subscribe to my channel to be notified when I post part two. Please like the video and comment below with how you think I did as a complete beginner. Until next time.